my mother was between husbands, um, which meant, hi Chris. <laughs> Um, that meant that our household consisted just of my mother and my brother and I. I was about 12 or 13 years old, and one night both my mother and my brother had made plans to go out, and I decided it was time that I stayed home without a babysitter. My mother agreed, and before she went out that night, she wrote the phone number on a little note to put it by the phone, so just in case I had to call her. I don't think so. And then she left, and there I was, alone. And thus began my first night home alone, also known as my night of terror. <laughs> so our house was usually pretty active. There was always something going on. We were having a meal together, or we were playing a game, or maybe my brother and I were fighting. It was always something. There was noise, something. But tonight it was quiet, just really quiet until I heard a sound. And it was just kind of a little creak or a crack, exactly the kind of sound someone would make if they were trying to sneak around. There it was again. Now this was the mid-1950s and we lived in a large two-story house in Los Angeles. And I knew that in Los Angeles, shit happened. <laughs> and I thought it was about to happen here. I didn't think anyone was actually in the house, but it was dark out and I couldn't see out, but I knew they could see in. There was another sound. I dropped to the floor and I scurried to press myself against the wall underneath the window. And I sat there for a few minutes thinking this was not a good night for my mother to leave me alone. The phone was in the next room and I decided I'd better call her. So I started crawling on the floor, hugging the wall as I went and staying under the level of the windows until I got to the other room and to the table where the phone was. And then I reached up and got the phone and brought it down to the floor and got the little note and brought that down. And I started to dial the number on our rotary phone. Nine. <laughs> seven. <laughs> it was taking forever, but finally, Finally, we got through and it was ringing on the other end and somebody answered and I asked for my mother and they said she hadn't arrived yet. I was, oh God, my heart just dropped. But luckily she got there just then and they put her on and I said, you've got to get home. There's somebody lurking around outside and I'm really scared. You've got to get back here right away. And she said she would. So we hung up and I just hoped she'd get here soon enough. I, th I thought, well, when somebody gets in, and they're going to, um, they're going to search for me, and they'll look downstairs first, so I'm going to go upstairs. That'll buy me some time. So I crawled to the stairway, and I crawled up the stairs. And when I got up there, I locked myself in the bathroom, and I waited. And for a while, it was quiet. But then there was a definite sound, the kind of a, clunk and, and some, I don't know, strange sounds. <laughs> and I thought, oh God, somebody is definitely in the house. I, I know it. And I started crying. And I thought, I knew they were going to get in here. I do. Oh God, I'm going to die. And, and then I heard another sound. It was a little louder and it sounded like footsteps. And I'm just freaking out. And now I start screaming. And all I can hear is my own screams and, and see in my head this horrible knife-wielding weirdo that was going to kill me. And then I heard a voice. And I went, oh, God. I didn't, I was screaming, though. I was screaming hysterically. And I didn't know what the voice said because I was screaming. But I thought it, I, it must have said something like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> So I screamed some more, and then somehow I heard the voice again, and this time it said my name. I think, oh my God, they know my name. Oh shoot, oh God. And then they said it again, and this time it was more distinct, and it was right outside the bathroom door, and it's going, Peggy, Peggy. I go, oh my God. I stopped screaming for a second, and I hear, Peggy. I recognized the voice. I unlocked the door, and I hugged my mother. <laughs> I was never so glad to see her. 
And by then, of course, I knew there had never been a monster, but it was still a long time before I stayed home alone again.